Today's scripture reading brings us to Psalm chapters 81 through 86. And I have chapter 81 titled as this, My What Could Have Been. And the reason I titled that is, if you were to follow through the progression of these 16 verses, you would find that verses 1 through 7 speak of a celebration of God's deliverance. They're just, the psalmist is magnifying God for what he has done. Verses 8 through 10 then talks about God's command for sanctification. We see in verse number 9, Thou shalt no strange God be with thee, neither shalt thou worship any strange God. And then the remainder of the psalm uh, I have as uh, Israel's rejection and what could have been. Israel rejected God's command for sanctification. And so it says here, like in verse number 12, So I gave them up unto their own hearts, a lust, and they walked in their own counsels. All oh, that my people had hearkened unto me, and Israel had walked in my ways, I should soon have subdued their enemies um, and turned my hand against their adversaries. The haters of God should have been submitted themselves unto him, uh, but their time should have endured forever. He should have fed them also with the finest of the wheat and so we see the remainder of this psalm is just, man, they could have had it so good. But because they rejected God and his command for sanctification, for separation, and to worship him only, then, you know, what could have been into turn, turned, out, turned out to, uh, you know, what didn't happen. And all too often in too many Christians' lives, uh, they get to the end of it and they look back and they're like the psalmist, man, oh, what could have been? What could have been had I not spent all that time on myself? What could have, what could have been had I not uh, tried to fill my pockets and yet they had holes in them because I wasn't honoring God just as Haggai chapter 1 speaks of. And so Psalm 81, my what could have been. Psalm 82, I have that titled, A Call to Judge Unjust Judges. Psalm 82 is speaking about the judgment of unjust judges, and uh, he's accusing these judges of having a respect of persons and an unconcern for the poor and needy. And in verse number six, he says, I have said ye are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High. And what he's saying, you know, they're not gods, and that's not what he's saying. What he's saying is they were essentially in the place and in the stead of God. They had the power of God to judge right from wrong, good from evil, to uh, lift some up and to uh, abase others. They had that power and they abused it. And so he says there in verse number seven, uh, verse number six, I have said to your gods and all of your children of the Most High, he says, but ye shall die like men and fall like one of the princes. So we see in uh, Ch uh, excuse me, Psalm 82, uh, the psalmist is calling for God to judge. Uh, the unjust judges, and is declaring that they will uh, be judged by the great judge. Psalm 83, I have that titled, Get them, Lord, but save them if you can. <laughs> I don't know where I guess that stuff. Uh, but that's the title of it. Get them, Lord, but save them if you can. Uh, we see in the first eight verses of chapter 83, there's a confederate against Israel. Now, as far as I know, the the, the countries and stuff that are listed, there's nothing in Scripture that speaks specifically of all these countries coming together to go against the children of Israel. However, that's what he's saying here, that there was a confederate against them. They had all banded together to go against Israel. And the psalmist is then uh, in, in um, verse number 9 through, oh, I don't know, 14, somewhere in there. He's calling for God to get them. Uh, verse number nine, do unto them as unto the Midianites, as to Caesarea and to Jobin and the brook of Kison. And he goes on. But then, you know, he shows mercy and he has the attitude that what we Christians ought to have against our enemies, against those who would make league against us. Uh, in verse number 16 and 18, verse number 16, he says, fill their faces with shame that they may seek thy name, O Lord. Verse number 18, that men may know that thou, whose name alone is Jeho Jehovah, are the most high over all the earth. So the psalmist is saying, get them, Lord, but you know, save them if you can. Uh, he wants them to know the name of the Lord God, uh, Jehovah. 
All right, now, uh, Psalm 84. I have uh, that titled, It's Better in the Father's House. Psalm 84 uh, speaks a lot about the house of God. We see the courts of the Lord mentioned in verse number two, even thine altars in verse number three. Verse four, blessed are they that dwell in thy house. And um, so we see that uh, the psalmist is talking about uh, his desire to be in the Father's house. And there's some notable verses that really just are powerful. Verse number five, he says this, blessed is a man whose strength is in thee and whose heart are the ways of them. And in verse number 10, it says, for a day in thy courts is better than a thousand. And I had said something similar to this, I mean, just a week or two ago when I was preaching. I can't remember what it was. I had said something about, man, it's better to wash feet in the house of God than to reign uh, outside the outside the walls of God. But it says here, the same gist is found in verse number 10. Uh, for a day in thy courts is better than a thousand. I had rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. It's better in the Father's house. Psalm 85, I have that titled, Thanksgiving, Petition, and Promise. And because it's kind of separated of, separated in a past, present, future tense. We see kind of the past is mentioned, um, uh, thou hast forgiven, you know, in verse number two. And it goes down through, I think, verse five. And in verse number six, wilt thou not revive us again that thy people may rejoice in thee? Show us thy mercy. Now he's speaking in the present tense. And then verse number, well, let's just say verse number 11. It's probably before this, but verse number 11 says, truth shall spring out of the earth and righteousness shall look down from heaven. And so in these three, kind of a past, present, future tense, uh, looking at it, um, we see that uh, um, that the psalmist is is giving thanks for what God has done. He's making a petition for what he needs God to do, and he's resting on the promises uh, of God there. In verse number six, let me say that again. Wilt thou not revive us again that thy people may rejoice in thee? This is a prayer that would do us all good if we would just study on it and pray that ourselves. Finally, in Psalm chapter 86, I have that titled, Davidly Faithfully Praise praise. You heard that right. Like I said, tonight's just a weird night, but David faithfully prays, P-R-A-Y-S, prays, P-R-A-I-S-E, because in this psalm, you see in these uh, several verses, 17 verses in the psalm, the majority of them are all just praising the Lord. He, he, he hardly asks for anything. He asks to preserve his soul there in verse number two, and then he asks... Uh, uh, I think the only other thing is found in uh, verse number uh, verse number 14. But you see continually in here, like verse number 5, For thou, Lord, art, art good and ready to forgive and plenteous in mercy unto all them that call upon thee. Verse number 8, uh, Among the gods there is none like unto thee, O Lord, neither are there any works like unto thy works. Verse number 10, for thou art great and doest wondrous things. Thou art God alone. Verse 12, I will praise thee, O Lord my God, with all my heart, and I will glorify thy name uh, forever. Uh, you know, let me tell you this, and that is you get, get alone with God sometime and just pray praise. Man, that's all you need to do. Just praise the Lord. Why? Because he's good. Because his mercy endureth forever. We have a great God. And I hope you know him. If you don't, you certainly can. Why? Because right there in verse number five, it says, uh, Lord, thou art good and ready to forgive and plenteous in mercy unto all them that call upon thee. Trust in the Lord. Lean not unto your own understanding. That'll do it for tonight. I hope this uh, study has been a blessing unto you. And Lord willing, we'll see you tomorrow.